Welcome back to the Brew Crew Podcast, everyone. This is episode 138. Hopefully only one part this time. Hopefully. I, re- I, I uh, JT, I refreshed the computer, and we did a, just a dry... We actually did some pre-production today. We did some pre-production. We did a sound check, which we haven't done in a long time because it's pretty much been a plug-and-play setup. Yep. So this is the bad beer episode. We've been waiting for this episode for a long time. We had it on the book. Well, first we didn't. First we said, let's in the future do a bad beer episode. Then we put it on the books. Yeah, we actually committed to it because yeah. it's pointed out by a lot of the chugglos that we have a, a million, jubillion good ideas, yeah. but we need to start putting uh, some uh, rubber to the pavement. Yes. So we picked a date. Uh, we had a Rolex it one week just because of availability. And if you notice, uh, we're not joined by Cobra, but we're still doing it. The Red Solo Cups are out. He was able to drop off his beer, mm-hmm. but he had to skedaddle for some real world shit. Um, that he, uh, you know, uh, made a, an appointment. So we're still going to do it. We're doing it. And we have his approval to go through. And uh, if he wins, he's not going to know. So we're just going to split the cash. That's right. And we have a special guest today, the Home Renovation Crew. The Home Renovation <laughs> Crew, yeah. <laughs> they're here once again. That's okay. Because they're they're working hard. And that's what, you know, that's what the Brew Crew Podcast is all about. It's about working hard. Yeah, it's, a, it's about, uh, you know, making people happy and uh, getting my bar back. Because my bar is the... Uh, Mm-hmm. The church room bar slash uh, kitchen slash uh, everything else that's in our house right now because we're relegated to a, a smaller room, but hopefully not too much longer. Yeah, hopefully not too much longer. Um, but I don't live here, so it doesn't bother me. If you did live here, though, we would make room. Thanks. You bet. I appreciate that. So I had a thought on the way over here. I was going to ask you guys about... Uh, And I'll I'll ask you because I think you probably have this thought sometimes. Uh, You're driving down. Let's say you're driving down Grange Hall Road. Yep. Okay. Okay, Long stretch of road with a lot of yards. Lots of yards. Nice manicured yard. Nice man. Maybe not manicured, but cut, cut, cut. It's not cut. It's residential. Residential. Yeah. yeah. Cut, cut, cut. Not cut. Cut. A bunch of cut. Do you think like that'd be fun? I'll just go real quick. Cut that grass. Because it it's like perfect. All the neighborhoods perfectly level. Everyone, it seemed like everyone cut their grass on Saturday or Sunday. Yep. So they're all about the same, except this one guy. He's like, fuck it. I'm waiting another week. So when I was gone for two weeks, we were that guy because my wife didn't have the, she had just uh, con- um, got a promotion and wasn't able to mow. Mm-hmm. So when I came back, I had to mow six times or three times in six days mm. and then four times in nine days just to get it down and chop yeah right yeah you so, start high and you just go lower yeah okay. so i like what you're saying i wish some neighbor would have had that thought and would have drove by yeah. my yard and i never like that act been on fun. it i don't act on it now there was an apple so during the pandemic uh when we were in lockdown i downloaded this lawn mowing app you don't get points you don't get any, there's no winning you literally it's just to kill time you just sit there really and you mow grass yeah and some lawns are tall some lawns are short but they're all they all need a mow and then sometimes you'll mow and underneath will be like a pattern yeah or like art like one of them was the mona lisa that you you're uncovering as you mow um and it's in you know lighter green and dark green grass oh, so right? it's like laid over yeah or like as if it was like a professional landscaper who had you know trimmed the grass in certain areas in one way and then trimmed the others you know how the baseball stadium yeah, yeah yeah like the all-star game and stuff i'm a professional manscaper yeah i know myself. i know you've, you yeah yeah you are yeah um that's amazing those are those are self-services but i think that app messed me up because now when i see all this nice short grass and then i see one that's that needs a cut yeah i'm like actually like oh that'd be fun but it won't be, it wouldn't be no, because the minute I get the lawnmower out, I'm like, oh, what am I doing? That's a fleeting thought. This sucks. That's okay. That's healthy. I like cutting my own grass. That's healthy to have that. Yeah, but I, I see it and I'm like, oh yeah, they I'm, left that for me. I'm at the point now where both both girls like to ride with me. Oh yeah. So it's fun when the five year old wants to because she can steer a little mm-hmm. bit and stand there. But when the two year old wants to, I still have to control her and yeah, yeah. at the same time. So if you do something sharp, it's juggling. Yeah. So I never let the kids ride with me on the riding mower but i did get one of the trailers yeah and then i would i would lock the the blades off yeah and we would drive around the yard but i never let them ride with me while i was mowing yeah so they i think they just that what if so i think my daughter likes the because they both have noise canceling headphones so i put baby einstein on yeah and we uh the two-year-old just likes that's cool riding 
the the five year old likes to she'll she'll steer a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, so we we have a trailer, but sometimes they will hop in their jeep, mm. so they have a battery powered jeep, and they'll follow me around the yard. Oh yeah, I miss the fun. riding mower because beer. Yeah, and that and that's, they come with cup holders, for right? A and that's that's why I definitely uh, upgrade because the baseline didn't have the higher seat back and didn't mm. have the cup holder. So for an extra two hundred dollars, whatever, I got the both those. Would you get a deer? Yeah, oh yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I grew up on a dairy farm, so yeah. Well, yeah, every, everything's shot deer. But okay. um, uh, so now yeah, now I have a tractor. But yeah, that's how it's be- that's how it's beer related because everything is everything's beer related. Yeah, it's like the one degree of beer, the yeah. you know six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Because most of the time when you're mowing. You're either having a beer with you or the first thing that you're searching after you get done mowing is something to wet your palate. And it's typically a beer in the middle mm-hmm. of summer. Yeah. So that, that a nice kickoff. You yeah, did, a nice kickoff. You, you I did, saw that on the way here. You you did say, though, that you had a piece of beer news. I do have beer news. And, you know, I, I'm not sure how exciting it is. Um, we just talked about grass growing. So I think uh, I think... Anything is on. That we did talk about grass growing, and in some cases, and even you know, paint watching paint dry. Mm-hmm. There are cases where it's not the the metaphor. I, I would. Where it's actually decent. I, I don't want to watch I, it grow. I would rather mow grass than paint. Hundred percent. Yeah. Oh yeah. Me too. Me too. It's I would. I would. I'm a, I'm a pretty good painter, but I don't want to do it. Yeah. No. Mowing. Uh, some some scientists <laughs> studying. Uh, the variations in flavor of beer. Yep. Based on the CO two. Okay. In the beer, uh, have de- have decided that they that the best route to uh, to study this variation is to count the bubbles. To so, count the bubbles. So there are twice as many bubbles. I should I should okay. I've I've started with that. There's twice as many bubbles, in which. Beverage was I going to finish that sentence with? Champagne or beer? Beer. I mean, yeah, sorry, sorry, I would have said champagne. You would have said yeah, champagne. I would have, I would have said champagne. Okay, it's beer. You, you loaded. You I did loaded. load it. I did load it. There are twice as many bubbles in beer as champagne. Uh, <clears throat> they, they're they discovering that in a half a pint yep. of, a, of beer being poured, you will get two million bubbles. And, but that is obviously it varies because that's what that's releases a, a lot of the flavor. That's a terrible job. Whoever had to count those. Yeah, I'm guessing that they use some sort of you like count the jelly bean type of situation. But as we proved with the Super Bowl commercial, it would be impossible to do that in a 30 second window. Yeah, I, I don't think the 30 second window was part of the requirements for the the study. But I think that Are the sure? bubbles pop. Too soon to count them all. Yeah. But whatever they did, maybe they use a slow slow motion camera. Maybe they. Estimated, right? So a slow motion camera, slow it down to like one one millionth. Yeah, and then you're able to count them. Yeah, you can count them by but, one. But it does it, it takes like thirty years to count to a million, doesn't it? Yeah, if you count once a second. Once a second. Okay. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. So it would take. This study took a long time. The sacrifices I, I'm guessing that are they made used for computer. Beer. I mean, computers. It, it's not proven. Um, there could have been a lot of people counting, saying, "I'll count from here to here." You know, like five people they teamed up. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe Harvard people. people are smart. They, it, what if you they count the same bubble twice? I don't know. Study seems flawed. Yeah. Um, the I did actually have a piece of beer news. Oh, good. And this was sent by uh, really Chuggle Ryan. Pantera came out with a beer. Oh, good. Here's a here's a picture that got sent to the Chuggalo account. Oh, I like it. Unfortunately, as you know, because they want to make money, look what kind of beer it is. Golden, Golden ale. ale. Golden ale. Fart noise. Yeah. What do you think Pantera's beer should be? Uh, something. Fruity, like a straw, strawberry yeah, sour. Strawberry sour? <laughs> I don't yeah, think um, so. Uh, something dark. Not everything you know, can cemet- be dark. Cemetery yeah. gates, you know, far beyond driven. Um, uh, pa- Interesting. IPAs are overdone, so like a, a, a stout. Just a dark, molasses-y, robust stout. Okay. No apologies. Polarizing. No apologies. Yeah, I can see that. But maybe that's why they did a gold well, they, nail. They maybe they're like, money. we like these. The, the and name, no apologies. The name is that. the name is selling it. So you, you can sustain on that. Yeah, you can probably it. get all the way through Cowboys from Hell, have four or five beers, like a power hour. So Cowboys from Hell, I think, is 68 minutes. 68 minutes. So that's just over specific. A, just over a power hour. Uh, I'm not sure, but I said it with confidence. I think that you're right. I, said I think it, you're I, sure. I said it with confidence. I think you're sure about Pantera's so you're eight minutes over. discography. So if you have eight golden ales, 
eight or nine golden ales. You've had a solid night. Oh yeah, you've had a solid night. What? Some golden nails, some Pantera, and hopefully some friends. Yeah. So I, uh, I, uh, I really, I really love me some Pantera. Don't so go it alone. Don't, don't go it alone. But I think now we'll get to why everyone's here on episode one thirty. Let's do it. Let's just jump in, man. The terrible beer. It's terrible beer. That's why we're here. So the the real uh, fun part about this is logistically we're gonna do it live. Nothing's pre. I I prepped the glasses, so we're I put do our it live. I, I put our initials. I'm gonna go get my beer. Fuck it. I'm gonna ask. We're gonna do it live. And and how we were gonna do this is uh, we were gonna do it all blind. We're gonna. So JT, yeah. do you want to do it blind, or are we just gonna pour in front of each other? Uh, well. I think we could pour in front of each other. Like, I don't think we have to leave the room to pour these beers. Okay. I think we, you can, we can just respect the space and not look. And that's why I think we could do Chris's beer. We, I can open a bottle cap. Like, I'm looking at the ceiling right now. I could open this bottle cap if I had the bottle opener and the bottle. And no one needs to see it. And I can just look at the cup. I can actually peripherally pour this beer without ever seeing what it is. Okay, the beauty is you can pour yours because you know what it is. I'm just gonna pop True. right into the bathroom. Let me go ahead and do that. And we're, uh, we're because we're gonna be at two separate places. My idea was right, there's gonna be three of us. Matt doesn't trust his own eyesight, so he's gonna pop into the bathroom. I wandering eyes. He's got wandering eyes, yep. He's always looking at my chest. I'm always looking at chest. It's crazy, I don't get it. But, uh. That's a hint, mine, mine comes in a box. So uh, here's what I brought. Just kidding, I'm not gonna say it. But I will show it to the camera while Matt's in the bathroom That's opening his beer. I will do this so that's same. this. If you want to zoom in, you know what? I'll just walk up to the. Because I'm not up. looking. I bought this beer because I don't think these flavors go together. Here's some of them. This is a complete competition. Here's what this beer is. I'm here to win. There you go. I've uh, I've showed the camera. I'm I even will... pouring. I'm even pouring three glasses, just because I uh, I'm a dummy. He's pouring three glasses because he's a dummy. Oh, yeah, I did the same thing. What an idiot I am. So, let me just go ahead and just uh, so, split so these you, up. So you just let me know. That was really funny. Are you, have you poured? Do you want me to blindly open Chris's? Where's uh, his at? Uh, no. Um, his is on the floor. I, we'll, we'll do it together. All right. Uh, oh, my. Okay. He looked. He looked. He doesn't <laughs> have the confidence in himself to not look. No, but we'll do it the same. Uh, Chris's is... Uh, Glutenberg blonde. So oh, that, okay. that, that's leading to a strong I'm gonna say I'm gonna I got a, a tip from Chuggalo Dr. Jeff who said <laughs> Glutenberg's where it's at if you're gluten free. Are you gluten free? I'm not, but Dr. Jeff's spouse is. And this is room temperature. So we we're we uh, Oh room temperature, wonderful. I'm really happy about that then. Okay. So uh, what I'm what I will ask you to do is uh -huh. to put your two cups. Yeah. Put my two cups. And then we could we could either mix them up or we can just Okay. All right. Okay. So yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay. That's yep. I think I'm good. I take that one. I mix them up. Okay, you already mixed them up? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so... Let me just make sure. Oh, should I not? No, no, that's fine. It doesn't matter. This is not really scientific. It is scientific. So it's important. I, I do I do have a guess. Okay, I made sure. It's all good. We're good. I don't think I'm going to be the worst, but I committed to this beer with the help of Chuggalo Mikey a long time ago, like when we first had, uh, um, uh, committed to doing this. Yeah. Cause this is a beer I so I've had my beer before. Can I smell them? Yep. So you can smell them. Start tasting them. Whatever. Was, was yours chilled? Yeah. Okay. So two of ours were chilled. Two are chilled. I'm gonna go ahead with the room temperature one yeah, first, which, which kind of ruins it, because we know what it is. Okay. So I've had that. Oh. Room temperature definitely. And he said last week his might have been sitting in the sun too, but it's a can. It shouldn't affect it too much. Hmm. All right. Boy, these aren't that bad of a beer. Fierce. <laughs> so I, I. There's got to be some way worse beer out there. I, I went. I'll tell you. I'll tell you mine. So do, sh should I spill the beans on what mine is? Sure. Okay. So I actually went with Toppling Goliath. Okay. But I went with their worst beer, like their, you know, like, 
you know, like three Floyds and Bugatti, which is just fun to say. Um, I went with a beer that I had, and I guess I don't think I'm going to win, which I'm completely fine with. I'm making a statement that even very lauded beers, and we've had Toppling Goliath twice on this podcast. We had him on episode 38, and we had, uh, which was King King Sue. King Sue. And then we had him on episode 120, which was Fire Skulls and Money. So uh, both IPAs. And for the record, I didn't think Blurple Gotti was bad. I thought it was a decent beer. No, and that was something I was going to ask because um, I didn't have your scores from the two episodes I missed. But um, oh, I'll get them for you. Yeah. Um, mine is uh, so so the beer is what again? Uh, mine? It's Toppling Goliath. Uh, uh, Dorothy's old New World Lager. Okay. This Dorothy's is, this, New World the, Lager. This Interesting. Is mine. We can still do uh, counter boner segments if you want because this is one that we haven't done on the podcast, but I have, I have rated this beer before. So again, not my least favorite. I, I, I wish I would have guessed. Uh, un- okay, unfortunately, it's my least favorite. I don't know from, that I would have gotten it. It's my least favorite from, and I'm on record. I'm not diverting. This is like a, this is like a, a Californian common. Oh, okay. So it would have been a tough one to guess. I need to try this common again. Do you, I know we're going to do the mystery color of death, so I don't want to waste yeah. it if you have one. Yeah, but, Anchor's uh, team. Um... Oh, you can take a roadie. That's fine. No, no, no. I, I'm not. I'm not. Well, uh, I, I I'm not saying. What kind of beer is this? Oh, a lager. Okay. Yeah, so it's a lager, but it tastes like a common. Not, yeah, it's, I would not try. Uh, no. I actually like this beer. I don't like the smell of it. Well, I mean, I don't love it. So maybe it would be my least favorite toppling alive. What do you think my beer is, if you haven't seen it already? Okay, so I think it's a cider. Oh, wow. Is it a cider? No. Okay. Let me just taste it again. I taste apple. You're wrong, but I can see where you get that from. You, you said it like in a I nice can... way. You let me down nicely. <laughs> You're you could have just clotheslined right. me. Um... You're I can see where you get that from based on the taste. So here's what my beer is. It's the Flying Dog. I also went Big Brewery. Yep. Uh, strawberry Jalapeno Margarita goes. Okay. So I get the spice. Yeah, you get that, the spice. That, 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 that came second. out. That's, yeah, I, I was hoping you'd mention that. I, I'm not surprised that you went with a spice beer. Because again, yeah, it, we, I don't we, like we, them. We, went, we went with beers that um, we've said for 137 episodes, yeah. 130 plus episodes, we don't like. JT doesn't like spicy beers. We or don't. Cobra is the same way. I can speak for Cobra. I don't like like Anchor Steam. This to me, even though it's a lager, comes off like an Anchor Steam, and it comes off at a craft price point, and it comes from a brewery that I absolutely adore. Everything else that they do. Mm-hmm. So that's why we were like, and uh, Chuggle and Mikey goes get that because you you won't stop bitching about that beer mm-hmm. it'll give you all the content you want for three hours wow wow yeah i hadn't heard heard you complain about that beer i'm glad i didn't because that would have had we had we done this a little more like this is fun to do just uh, just a rando like this yeah these I, this I, gluten one being room temperature is giving yeah, it a leg up in the terribleness it is ruining it i think cold this might not be horrible closest gluten-free beer to beer that I've seen that I've had it's a blonde 4.5% alcohol uh okay it it has nutrition facts on here like in the way that they would on food I wonder why that's different um I don't know are we rating these or just saying which we which we think is the worst or just talking about them we we could do we could do whatever Gluten free craft. I thought it said millet and corn. Millet. The problem with this strawberry jalapeno beer <coughs> is that everything but the jalapeno is good. Like I said, I think it's actually a really good goes. And you could, and it does stick out. Oh, like so it it's a ghost. Okay. Se- separate from the from the spice, it sticks out. Now I still don't like the spice on the end, but it comes at the end. It doesn't hit your tongue. Spiciness. I think the strawberry sticks out. The margarita is probably that, that. I don't know. They probably put like some sort of lime or something in there, and that's where you're getting the apple from the goes and the 
whatever lime maybe what's the name of it flying dog flying dog strawberry jalapeno margarita goes brew house rarities very margarita goes okay mm -hmm. don't say jalapeno say jalapeno yes oh yeah that's what they said on the bottle give that person a raise um, so I went, so with this beer, yeah, what's your process behind this? Yeah, I bought a beer, uh, that I thought was the worst beer I'd seen ingredients wise, just based on the fact that it had coconut in it. And it was from a brewer that we review regularly. It was, um, Untitled Art. Um, but I just said, you know what? I'm going to just do one thing. The guy at Arrow, total, totally nice guy and seems to really know beer. Yeah. And I went in, and I didn't want to say I was doing a podcast or anything, so I said, I'm trying to get my friend the worst beer that I can find. Can you tell me what you think is the worst beer in the store? After he, he said Bud Light, then he went to this? Yeah, I said it has to be craft, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so I did give him the rule that I need a craft beer. Uh, it's a joke and blah, blah, blah. He get, he pointed me to this one. Um, maybe I'll bring that other coconut one, because I did buy it. Is so, it a coconut milk stout? No. No, okay. no, it's a, uh, it's a bunch of, it's like mango, coconut, and a couple other things. <clears throat> Where are all these mangoes coming from? I, I don't know. I, I think the mango market is driven up by beer. Oh, totally. No one else is eating mangoes, except for my friend on the ship, who's allergic. Um, but I saw this and I was like, yeah, that sounds terrible. But unfortunately, Flying Dog made a good strawberry margarita goes. And then they put spice on the end of it. So I'm not a fan. But I don't hate it. Okay, I have a far and away the worst. But I mm. think it gets boosted up that it wasn't chilled. The Glutenberg is... I, I don't think your beer's the worst. I think... I The Glutenberg is... It's a tough room temperature drink. It's the millet. There's something in this beer that actually tastes good. It's the love. It's got to be the love. It's that's made in the same factory that Pseudo Sue and King Sue and Dragon Fruit and all the all the good Toppling Goliath. See, I don't like their 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 description here. It's wrong. This says clean and taste. That's the only part I disagree with. I think it tastes dusty. And I've said that before about other beers. No, I, I, think I that agree. Are similarly, yeah, it, it doesn't leave the palate. It, it sits there and resonates, and you know it ponders, you know, life for a little bit. It's got a dustiness to it. Uh, charms the senses with distinct flavor and refreshing simplicity. Just like Grandma Dorothy. Who has a Grandma Dorothy? Like I'm everyone a, has like an Uncle Steve. I have it, but no one has a Grandma Dorothy. My my uh, my daughters have an Uncle Steve. There you go. So I have three grandmas, uh, Morel. Donna and Janet. Those are those are um, names that aren't uh, as common. Janet is, I feel. It is, but I don't know anyone. Don Donna, not Janet anymore, personally. and then definitely Morell. Yeah, no, I don't know anyone named J Janet. Yeah, that might be one that's uh, left by the wayside. I definitely don't know anyone named Dorothy. I know two people at at our um, at my work um, that are named Janet, but they're older. I just older can't tell me. which one's worse. So I think the goes is the best, sadly. The best of the three. Okay, we agree. All right. So I and that that that's. I think there's a gap. Yeah, the first one. There's a gap between the first and the last two. I feel like there's a B movie going on upstairs. Like Jerry Seinfeld's gonna come out and be like, you know, what is it with, with all of woman. these? Because that movie's crazy, by the way. The B movie, B E E movie. B movie where the B uh, falls in love and the girl falls in love with. They fall in love with each other because that's not weird. No. So the Glutenberg is four point five. It's from Glutenberg, California. Mm. There's a place called Glutenberg, or is that Gutenberg? Glutenberg. Glutenberg. A place Glutenberg. Oh, maybe. Oh no, maybe it's a Canadian beer. Glutenberg.ca. Maybe that's the. Is website. this a gluten-free beer, or did I just make that up? Nope. It's actually the website. It's from Canada. 
Hmm. All right. So it's the location, Glutenberg. Yep. It's not a gluten-free beer. And it's imported by Mountain Pleasant. No, it's gluten-free. Oh, it is gluten-free. Yeah. Water, millet, corn. Is corn gluten-free? Well, is it, is it, is, so gluten, right, uh, is in wheat. And it's probably in a couple other things. Yeah. So I'm guessing that's not gluten-free. I'm guessing it's not in corn. Okay. I don't know anything about Because it's water, corn. millet, corn, damara, sugar, hops, and yeast. Glutenberg. Yeast. I feel like there's gluten in yeast. Probably not. They're the, they're the experts. Um, so, yeah, I think the best beer, so not the winner. The best of, this, of the three. Yeah. Is, is, and we agree, is the Flying Dog. Uh, strawberry, yeah. margarita, jalapeno goes. All right. I got it. Okay. My worst beer, mm -hmm. just in case we have a dissension, or... So I think that's how you do it. You do the second runner up, then you do the champion, then the first runner up. Mm -hmm. So my the the winner of this competition is the Glutenberg for me. It I yeah. It might be unfair that it was served at room temperature. It might be unfair, but it's I agree. The, it's a rough the winner, it's a rough drink. The winner is the Glutenberg. This beer is terrible. Um it it's not <laughs> it would it would fit comfortably in the Mr. Cooler of Death. It yeah. is off-putting. And who knows? Maybe when we drink it ice cold, maybe it helps. But that the 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 uh, Dorothy's Old World. I could I, see that. And that happening. was my guess. I said I wouldn't win, but I wouldn't lose. Mm -hmm. And I did. You're right. Right on. There's something about this Dorothy's one that's not terrible. It is. Oh. It's not great. It's definitely not as they described it. But there's something sweet in there. and uh, Like a grain sweet. And then there's a dustiness. Yeah, it's a grain it's sweetness. Like a sweet dust. Um, the only reason... Like, it will fit in a mystery cooler of death. And the reason I wouldn't want to pull it is... Because I think it's going to be a break from much worse beers that are going to be in there that are domestics. Yeah. Um, well, it's yeah. the fact that it's a 16 ounce can. Oh yeah. I can see that. So this is like, but I can see people liking this. This is like a timeout. Really. It's a bad beer, but you're not getting, it's like a boxing match. This is like between round five and six. Mm. So this is a nice break compared to yeah. like the other terrible. Between that's five be and six. I would say it's like, but like a, a break in boxing is like rounds eight through 10. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. several rounds where several rounds you're in. just like, all right, they're just fucking around now. Like, clearly they're going the whole way. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they're going to go the whole way. I A room temperature Glutenberg towards the end of the night would <laughs> be abhorrent. It would be. It's abhorrent. I, I want to know how it tastes cold, but uh, not enough to try it. I think that the Dorothy... I don't know. Uh, somebody likes it. Well, yeah, I, I think I mean, there are people who like this beer. Old, you know that scene in uh, Old Man with Saggy Balls in Castaway, where to, um, Tom Hanks's character is delivering the package at the end of the movie. Yeah, and it's the old dusty roads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it was cold, that's what this beer tastes like. Those I, roads. The average age drinker on this is. The average age drinker that's a fan of this podcast? That drinks Dorothy. Oh, that d that drinks Dorothy, yeah. Uh, good, good, good. Uh, it's between 20 and 30. You think? And then between 95 <laughs> and 120. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is like the big brother to like a Coors Light. I don't think 20 year olds are drinking this beer. Oh, yeah. I just, other than than Stev, you don't have you haven't had the time to understand beer yet. They don't times. understand. That's why they buy this. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they heard Toppling Goliath and they're like, "Oh, that's the that, that's, that's the good." One. Look, they, and this one's wildly Sue different because blue is else. blue is the least popular color in Toppling Goliath. Oh, it is. I, is that is that I, a thing? That's just I a like guess that. for me. Let's let's test that theory. It's just a guess for me. 
But can art wise, so we so did we agree? We agree that the uh, flying we agree. dog we're in best, order. Yeah, flying dog is the best. Life, top mid, of life, and then no. the glutenberg one. Glutenberg one. What wins for can art? Because I mean, we got to do a can. Well, art. I'd like that's I, what pays I, the sponsors. Uh, yeah, let's do some can art here. Let's. I, I'm not even gonna bother with the glutenberg because it's not can art. It's just a. It's a yellow can. Right here, might just, well just to refresh on mine. Here it is, and here's this Dorothy. It took me now the story on that while you walked. Let me back, go a little closer because I'm going to talk about something you might not have seen. It took me six different locations to that. track down Dorothy's. Really? In three different states. I think they have all of the Top of the Goliath beers at Arrow. So um, I could have went just. You to were Arrow. over recently. We I think you could have went there. Yeah, because I knew I wanted that. When you invited me over to the uh, the JT Manor, mm -hmm. I don't know if I requ acquired it by that time. I've had okay. it for a while. It's been sitting sitting around the house. All right. Well, this is the Counter Bunner segment, still brought to you by Emily, I believe. By Emily. Uh, cheers. Yeah, cheers. So this this strawberry jalapeno beer has a cassette tape on the front, which reminds me a lot of the. Soundtrack to Guardians of the Galaxy. Excellent. He, he was uh, he was carrying around cassette tapes. They just did the announcement. The third one is coming out in 2023. Yeah, they had to get around rehiring back the director. James Gunn, who um, is doing um, the um, Suicide Squad. Yeah, I heard that too. Uh, should be better this time. So he's in both. I like the first one. He's in both universes. Didn't. Did you watch Mortal Kombat? Not yet. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I did. I do have HBO. I think that they're probably uh, quickly becoming the better of all the streaming services. Though, I know you don't care, but Apple, and this isn't just about the Apple one, this is about streaming services, period. Yeah. Apple's offerings have been. They have that show I want to so watch, the, the, the Moon one. They have, yeah, so they have. Um, to the Moon? No, it's. Um, We're on the Moon. <laughs> yeah. Man in the Moon. So. No, nope. cheese. Oh no, it's getting farther away. <laughs> um, for all mankind, fantastic. Actually, the number one show streamed in the United States, the uh, second season, uh, and uh, by eyeballs. Yeah, and uh, they have Ted Lasso, which is hilarious. Um, and I'm, as a non-soccer fan, I'm gonna say that show absolutely won me over within the first episode. Ted Lasso? Ted Lasso. It's no. got Jason Sudeikis. It won a, a award, like I guess if you like those things. The whatever the TV one is, the Emmys? Is yeah, that Emmys. Yeah. They won an Emmy. Uh, absolutely hilarious. She, Second season's coming out soon. Jason Sudeikis is hilarious. He is hilarious. So he's the star of Ted Lasso. He is Ted Lasso. He he plays the big oaf. Is he a big oaf in that show? No. Oh, oh okay. yeah, in a, in a way. So he's a college football coach. Who is uh, hired by? This has a very um, major league feel to it. He's hired by um, a soccer executive to to coach a team in England. Uh, I can't remember why the owner wants them to fail. I think she's going through a divorce, and her husband owns the team, but she wants to take it from her husband in the divorce. Something happens where they hire this football coach, like a real, like American football coach, to coach soccer in England. And it is such a great show. It is phenomenal. We watched I like that. the whole season like, I like the in almost no time. Um, kid appropriate? Did you watch it with it the kids? Uh, I watched it with the kids. It is kid appropriate. I mean, there might be some swear words. I can't remember. But there's no... I don't believe there's any sex or nudity or anything in that. So if that's what you're worried about. Um, I like sex and nudity. Yeah, but for the kids, we're past swear words with our kids like they can watch all that yeah. it's the sex and nudity that's the final i wasn't gonna say anything We've introduced them to like you know horror movies and all that stuff just it, the sex and nudity it was the um out of your son's mouth it was the uh, fifth fuck where i'm like okay this is just right normal. yeah we're, we allow our kids to here. just swear constantly no 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 like, what the, we, you know we go into the place saying don't uh and he goes don't use this language what the fuck mom where's my uh tortilla especially we when you watch um movies from the early 2000s there was a lot of what is now considered homophobic language in those movies there are things that you couldn't do you know, like the f word but not the four letter one there's used a lot you you forget how often that i'm not going to use it 
I feel like F word, but say not four letter. Yeah, for gay. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. I thought you were saying like, uh, so like, like fudge. No, I not fudge. When you were saying not like fudge. the F word, no, but no, no, not no, four not letter. Fudge. Uh, but you can say no, no. Fudge. Oh, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. they've I'm seen lost. Christmas Story as well, uh, and there's no swear words in that one except fudge. Yeah. Um, but in like the Hangover, which uh, yeah. we watch like the the edited version of, they do say that if you get the edited version from. Like back then, yeah. There's a newer, even newer version where they don't use those terms. We we just watched. You're an Office fan, right? Mm-hmm. So we just watched. Um, speaking of things that, so the, we're on the last season right now. My wife hasn't seen it before. We're on the last season where they do um, um, uh, the Christmas episode. Mm-hmm. If you know where I'm going with this, so Dwight has his uh, Christmas. The um, Christmas schmench. Yeah. The the not the. That's what Jim says, but it's, um, you know, the guy, the hermit, but yeah, then yeah, they have Black yeah. Peter, and they get the <laughs> warehouse guy to show up, and they're like, yeah, as long as your Halloween or your Christmas tradition doesn't have anyone in blackface, and it goes to the warehouse worker, and he just was like, <laughs> oh, and then later he has it, like, wiped yeah. off his face, but this is something that's been done, like, in our adulthood. Yeah. You couldn't do it you now. You couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Like, in the last 10 years. Yeah. So, thank goodness they haven't, you know, um, but I was... And I was grimacing because I was sitting next to my wife. And I was like, we should just fast forward. Yeah, yeah. So just we say, forward. okay, um, we're going to show you this because you're but then you are smart talk. young young boys and you uh, can, you understand. Don't use this language. But yeah. um, gosh, they're just you know they're hitting those years now, those prepubescent to pubescent years, and you just don't want them to get all crazy. Do you want to finish this the rest of this glutenberg? <sighs> Not at all. Okay. Um, but I, I will because it's here. I don't remember how I got into that. Uh, it's uh, it, it's the uh, the BCP. Oh, how do we get onto anything? How did we get there? How do? But we I was get reviewing it? this. James Gunn. He's he's doing the Guardians of the Galaxy. This is a very Guardians of the Galaxy like. I didn't even notice there was thing. a tape on it. Yeah, it's a cassette tape there. Um, and oh yeah, I was saying HBO is great, and then I got some other way. Um, but Apple TV is uh, have some good shows. But HBO is wonderful. I'm, 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 I'm just going to let you know so I don't throw you under while you do the uh, can art, bottle art segment. I'm going to rate these beers. You're going to rate them? All right, gonna, I'll I'm rate them. give them points. I can rate them. Uh, so that's this. I think it it has the Flying Dog logo. It also says volume 9.1, limited edition. It's 5.9% alcohol. Um, the label, I like the color of the label. The color of the t- cassette tape does give me the impression... Well, I guess you could say it's jalapeno colored, but it gives me the impression of maybe more of a citrus fruit was added in, like a lime. But um, that's just me. Uh, and then it says on the on the bottle, which I think is decent, it says, When salesman extraordinaire Chris Vasquez pitched us this brew house rarity, he only had to say four words, sweet, sour, spicy, strawberry. Uh, so we took this idea and ran with it all the way South of the border. Don't say jalapeno, say jalapenos to this spring break specialty that'll leave you feeling right at home in a Cancun foam party. All right. I, I like love where way they're go- wrong. I love where they're going with this. This would be a great beer garita. It could be a good beer garita, but man, if you're drinking, I mean, it's, I've never been to a spring break, like an event, right? Like a spring break planned event. If you're going to puke this up, because you're going to puke at spring break, right? Oh, yeah. If you you're don't puking, puke don't spice. puke this up. You don't no. puke spice. This is not a spring break beer. This is like a, it could be like a spring break lunch beer. And you're going to give yourself a few hours before you actually start partying. But don't drink this in the party. That's just, I, that's don't, just, I don't think that's, that's a good that's idea. Good that's good prep, prep beer. Uh, so that's the can art on that one. The can art on Dorothy's New World Lager. It's a little fancier. It's kind of got these. It's toppling Goliath. This feathered, uh, these feathered kind of. Uh, I don't know what they are. Just designs, feathered designs. And then on the back, it's got this checkered pattern, which is uh, reminiscent of a chain link fence, or I believe argyle. But this is a little uh, less solid. It's a cool design, though. It's a cool design. But that's it. I mean, it gives you... This can art is for the people who drink this beer. The 95-year-olds. 
95 yeah. year olds decorate their houses like this. 90, yeah, the 90. wallpaper and then these when, type of like sconces and stuff. When they when they go wings. on vacation, they wear shirts that are adorned yes. with this like yes, they do. bastardized fleur de lis. Yeah. So that's the can art on that. Can art on that. I'll rate them. Uh, Glutenberg. Oof. 1.0. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Um, flying dog. I'm I'm not gonna lie that that margarita strawberry thing on the front of this beer. I mean, I say front and back. I'm saying you don't taste the spice until it's all already swallowed, so it's all gone. It's the last thing that it's stays the last in your thing palate. that stays in there. But everything else is strawberry margarita. It's really good. I mean, I'd probably give the strawberry margarita a score. Maybe at or above four, but then the jalapeno is like, why is this here? I actually am in the threes on this one. I'm going to give it a 3.5. I would, now usually a 3.5 for me is like, I'd buy this and drink it again. I will, I would not buy this and drink it again, but I think that their, their execution on that was pretty solid. Um, and they wanted to deliver a spicy beer. And on the Dorothy, oh man. It's just... <laughs> Bless you. Thanks. It's great audio. It's dust. I mean, it's... Uh, 2.0. 2.0 right. on the Dorothy. Uh, at the, my first sip, I actually was uh, uh, the other way. I was like, wow, this is actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. But now it sucks. <laughs> yeah, bless you again. And now it's it the dust. You put the dust. It's too much dust. Get rid of the dust, uh, and and we're good. Awesome. So I, I just went back to check my Dorothy's Old World, and the reason where I got the California Common that's how it's classified in oh, Untapped. Oh no shit. And I uh, I rated this beer in Untapped in uh, 2016, and uh, I didn't know as much as I think I know now, mm -hmm. uh, which is awesome. And I said that exactly the way I planned it. Yeah. Uh, I, rated, right. I rated it then as a 3.25, but this was my comment to keep myself honest. Meh, their worst beer, their worst beer thus far. But it's great having friends drop off beer from Iowa. So I had somebody import this for me. Well, this must have been pre Toppling Goliath being everywhere. Yes, mm. and uh, it was unfortunate. I didn't put my location at the time, mm. um, but uh, <clears throat> I think that this is when Crego. Went to visit uh, his uh, stepdaughter and brought back beer. And I was mm. like, I like Toppling Goliath, so please pick me up some. The math checks out. Yep. Okay. The math checks out? Yeah, the math checks out. Thanks, Craig. I, I met Craig six months before then. Wow. So, anyways, but now I'm going to update my score. So I'm gonna st I'm gonna go in the same order that uh, JT went because I, I I feel like there's genius in that because I have a comment I want to make on the, fly on the flying dog. So the Glutenberg I'm at a 1.25. This beer is abhorrent. I'm finishing it just out of precedent. Oh man, you're a baller. Because uh, there's like a couple fingers Can't left. You do it. Um, there's... Did you finish your cup too? Yeah. Wow. So I, I need think, to catch up. I did my, not. My cups. Well, you were you were carrying the load. I was uh, I was living on Easy Street over <sighs> here. I can't do it. It's tough, and uh, there's more in that bag that he brought. I Hopefully there's only I one more I can't believe can. there's more in America. But I will say I went to Cincinnati for a doctor's appointment, and I stopped at the gas station to get some local beer, and the wild Ohio is wild out there. It's everywhere. It grows. You got it. You got it. I mean, it's just kill fucking it. like every flavor. Kill it with fire. Just at the gas station. Kill I'm not even talking fire. about a beer store. I mean, it's everywhere. Kill it with fire. Um, this is the worst import uh, from Canada since Justin Bieber. Um, second, so... Oh, I uh, wrote my beers wrong, so I, I scored them, so I just have to change a number. So the second, um, the Toppling Goliath, which I alluded to, I docked it an entire full point. Now it's a 2.25. Again, California commons are abhorrent. I've said this. I've been consistent Good about day. it um, for a long time. Uh, it's unfortunate because Anchor Steam, you know you're getting that. This is labeled as a lager. Um, I love the dusty profile. I never thought of that before. I'm going to update my comment. It's been five years. The sad thing is my best friend who suggested this beer um, had this at my favorite restaurant. I was going through his comment, comment and he rated this a 4.0. What's your favorite restaurant? Uh, Stella Blues. Stella Blues. Never so heard of it. it's, uh, it's in a, and he had it a year and a half after I did uh, for Christmas 2017. So I'm wondering if that was a, um, 
my Christmas I was there because that math would check out because uh, we always uh, we go there for friends miss. So he mm. had this terrible beer in front of me, 4.0. I'm sure we'll talk about that. <laughs> and then the Flying Dog. Flying Dog has a weird, they're approaching for my, besides like Raging Bitch, they're approaching shelf turd territory. Mm -hmm. You always see them, but they're you never right. buy them. Yeah, you never buy them. So mm -hmm. shelf turd-ish, approaching. This was a new beer, but yeah, I, I would agree with that. Yeah, I feel I feel that about a few other breweries as well. So even not not so big ones. The 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 one thing, and I don't do a lot of can art. The the thing that I think that the matte finish with like mm -hmm. it matches the tape. It looks old. It does. Yeah. So uh, that's just the one thing I wanted I to say. Why that is? Because um, matte finishes have been a thing of like today. Yeah, but now like it's it's not. Everything else is shiny. Granted, it's a label versus a can, but so, anyways, I think there was a clear distinction on how they did that. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, yeah, putting that. Yeah. But anyways, off the top rope, uh, three point two five. I, I, there's certain situations where that beer would be. I had Mexican for lunch. Um, if I would have had a beer margarita, that wouldn't have been a bad flavor. My mm -hmm. go-to margarita flavor. I know we're a beer podcast, but I feel like go-to margarita because mm -hmm. we just ordered from uh, Elsa's here this last weekend. Mm -hmm. My number one choice, mm -hmm. can you guess? It's a common fruit. I'm not going with like... I don't drink it's not a lot strawberry. of margaritas. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, let's go with lime. I'm a raspberry guy. Raspberry blended, not I, rocks. Even though rocks is a better value, blended for me. I'm. This, is, this might surprise you and everyone else who lives in this wretched Mexican food city. Elsa's does not do anything for me. I don't give a fuck about their margaritas or it's, their food. It's not... It's not the food, it's the margaritas. I know, that's what and everyone says, yeah. the big boys or whatever they're called, Jose's yeah. or what, what are bad, they called? Bad ones. Bad ones. Cause they, that's cause my they, name. Because they knock it up. Their their recipe has 10% more booze in it than yeah. off the shelf. I mean, tequila. nah, now, I'm good. Now, as Pass. a wrestling fan and a booze fan, yeah. we uh, have a bottle of the Rocks tequila. Mm, I didn't know you had a tequila. And that is uh, fantastic. It, there it is right up there next Terra to the JB. Terra Mana. Terra Mana, yep. Um, my, my wife um, Why got into skinny margaritas are when Samoans I was going. big on tequila? No, I think he wanted something that was uh, like gluten free. Like would make him a lot of money. But probably. he's making a yeah, ton that's of money. probably what he wanted. Yeah, he just turned forty nine, which is incredible. Yeah. But uh, um, tequila is also pretty good for health. Yeah, for people who are healthy. Yeah, so it's uh, ninety five calories a shot. You know, so rate it. Oh, rate, it is right on their par. I yeah. thought tequila was like pretty low, like the clear stuff, but that's brown. Well, the, um, oh, the only clear? reason is that's uh, on Yeho, so it's aged. So it adds calories to it? Uh, um, no, but um, the reason why it's not... It, the, the clear or whatever, that's just how aged it is. So oh, like okay. Patron Silver oh, or whatever, that, that's that. like uh, uh, six months to a year. That's oh, I didn't know anything a couple about years. Okay. I thought leached, tequila was good for people who... Uh, it's leached people. from oak, oak barrels. Oh, okay. Well, great. Good for the rock. It's yeah. making money. So if you ever hear, if you, you ever see Añejo, make it's your young, yeah. make your alcohol. If you're if you're ever famous, make an alcohol. Convince everyone that's all you drink, like and then everyone will buy it. Aviation gin. It'll be great. The Ciroc. Um, you know P Diddy. It, it, yeah, that was like the original. Yep. Aviation gin is, um, is Ryan the, Reynolds. Oh, Ryan Reynolds. The one, then there was uh, the George Clooney one that made like a billion dollars. Yeah, he sold that off. Uh, what was Man. it? Who knows? I forget. Who cares? Um, so I don't like gin. So and I won't ever drink it. I think that no this. What celebrity I think it. that this was a success. I think that uh, you know when Cobra comes back, um, or if we have a guest, they bring like an outside one, and mm -hmm. we do this again. I think this yeah, is this a is revisitable a one because there's a lot of terrible beers yeah, that we, need, we wouldn't normally buy. Yeah, um, we need suggestions. We need. Uh, I bought a suggestion. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. you did. Uh, and I did too, actually. Suggestion from the Arrow guy. Yeah. We need ones that are like, um, but not Wild Ohio, and it's gotta be just like renowned for being bad. Yeah, because I went to Cal. I, I brought out my big gun. You did, and I that was went your big gun because I hate California Commons, and it's mm -hmm. a California Common craft. Yeah, from someone I love. Mm -hmm. Love. So I'm I'm excited. Um, it's just, like I said, more beer for uh, the Mystery Cooler. Uh, yep. Once I get my bar back, I'm going to be able... I know I'm I know I'm know comfortably at 40 beers-ish. Wow. With uh, diverse... Uh, now I'm going to have three for this. I think that's mm -hmm. the most I have of any one beer. 
And that's not even putting the domestics in. That's all craft with the apologies to the Blue Moon. We're going to need a lot of people for this, Mr. Cooler. No, it's just going to be, uh, it's going to be UI, Cobra, and we're just going to uh, pass out <laughs> and then wake up, have some bacon, and then rally. Well, yeah, bacon's good. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a lot of people. It'll be an event. Yeah. We'll put a sign up. But, uh, put a sign up? <laughs> yeah. For the, for the crowd? For the crowd. So they know. You know, we'll have tickets. We'll have, like, a, in front of a live studio audience. Oh, yeah. I'd like to do that. People heckle us. We should do a live studio audience. audience yeah, audience. do, like, a Q&A. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say this is a call-in episode, too. So yeah. if you got a question, call in. Yeah, we'll do... We'll, do, we'll take calls later. We'll, we'll, we'll take calls later. But th- <laughs> this is one we'll do in person, obviously, one cooler. But um, um, yeah. yeah, it's easier to do those questions when it's, you know, one camera instead of Lincoln 3 or whatever. But, uh... Um, I wanted to, as we divulge and uh, we transition, yeah. that's what you call it, transition. transition. So last week, I took a lot of flack over my one drink choice. And I was told that IPA was too broad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you need a beer. What did I say? I forgot. I, I said I don't Bush think Light, I think. Else. You did say Bush Light. Yeah, I said Bush Light. So I chose a specific beer because it's safe. And I can have it with breakfast, lunch, dinner. Yeah. I wouldn't. I would never have a beer with breakfast. Unless I was eating breakfast for dinner. Um, but then it's dinner. Right. So my thought was an IPA. So it's yeah, a your beer. thought was IPA. So I narrowed it down. I narrowed it down to a style, but not enough. Because I think people recognize that there's too much. You, I had to commit more. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if I go off of a beer. And I thought about this. And I haven't deployed it yet. I, uh, I promised people that I would think about this more. Mm-hmm. Because honestly, this is not going to happen. So I can live in a uh, fairy tale. Later. Yeah, I could say Bud Light, really. You could. And uh, but I'm not going to. No, why would you? I think I'm going to go with uh, uh, cranberry Red Bull vodka. Boom. Okay. Fair enough. Because it's going to be fresh when I want something refreshing. I can mix it in different. So you you told Chris. That there was a cranberry juice that you think is a five. What is it? What's the brand? It's no, it's just Ocean Spray. One hundred percent cranberry. Spray. Oh yeah, one hundred percent cranberry juice. I love Ocean spray. Not juice cocktail. Not no, no, no. blend. One hundred percent. But they do make some good blends over there at Ocean Spray. Yeah, but if I'm if I if I'm taking one drink for the rest of my life, it's one hundred percent cranberry juice. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That that's that's so I'm. Let's marry the two. I, I know it's a beer podcast. I should go, but I'm just trying to think. So, cranberry Red Bull vodka. Okay. I could do cranberry Red Bull bourbon, but I haven't experimented too much. I've been doing yeah. a lot of whiskey sours lately. Because oh, it also got brought up by an individual that I haven't been drinking enough beers lately. You know, following me on Untapped. Oh, yeah. One, I don't post a lot of repeats. Unless yeah, it's yeah. been, you know, a difference. Well, you got to get those numbers up. And it's nice just to have like a, a, a finger or two of uh, whiskey at the end of the night. Yeah, right. It's always good. Just unwind. Yeah. Don't need to, you know, quantity, quality, all that stuff. Yeah, I was at Archer's the other day, and I, I wanted a, a cocktail. Another another want... Archer's visit. No, this was this is probably the same one. Did it's I already same, mention this? this same lemon same thing? one with uh, 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 Randy Orton? Yeah. Okay. Same one. And I didn't like the cocktails that they had to offer. I mean, I like whiskey sours. I like a, a Manhattan every now and then. Seven uh, and seven. That's a good one. I don't for like, like seven a... and seven because I don't like gin. No, 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 no. Seven and seven is uh, um, uh, Seagram's. It's not gin. Seagram something else. Yeah, so it's not. It's not a gin. So seven and seven is um, what is? It, it's not gin. But anyways, continue your. It's story. Not gin. Yeah. Something else Seagram's makes. Yep. Uh, I, I promise you, it's not gin. No, I, I, I believe you. I'm I'm thinking. Uh, I didn't like the cocktails, and I I don't know. I don't want a Manhattan from Archer's. Um. Yeah, it's just a light whiskey. Yeah, it's Seagram's Seven Crown and Seven Up. Okay. So it's just a light whiskey. Cool. Collins glass. Because in college, we got them in these, but it's well, not a you? Collins yeah. glass. Tall, 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 narrow Collins. Okay. Yeah, th- they serve some things in that. Uh, yeah, I'm not... Uh, so Andy... Uh, Ooh, I got a hot coos talk. He too. did get uh, gin, I believe. He got a gin. Some of sort of gin. <laughs> of course he would. He likes gin. I don't, I don't like gin. It, uh, I don't get it. Personally. Men... It's just grainy and tastes men, like fucking grass. Men and Randy Orton like gin. Men and Randy... That's false. 
Um, men who think they're Don Draper like gin. And everyone, all real men like it, whiskey. I, I will say this. Chuggalo Aaron, his favorite drink, he would go with gin. Great. And, good for Aaron. And no, I would just say. I don't like, think he's gin's a, good. He's I a, think it No, sucks. no, I would just say he's like every. I've I don't know where gin. the men thing came from. That's what men. I'm saying. Men. Yeah, men. Gin sucks. Yeah. Men. Gin I, sucks. I'm not. Me, no, I'm not man enough to. I. I don't think I'm man enough. I'm missing. It's like how some people like False. cilantro and False. some people don't like cilantro. Like so. Yeah. But I that's love more, That's an imbalance. That's that's something else. That's 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 biological. They, they're, they're, I want to like gin because I understand. I don't the like especially the ones that are rich in like botanicals and there's it, it falls more than just pine. Mm-hmm. You know, um, uh, there's a couple out there. That, there's a list that I have that you know if I ever try. But like I will go out. Yeah, and I'll have see, gin. I'm not trying to like like things for other people. I want to like it for me. Yeah, and th- I think gin is fucking awful, um, and that's okay. I thought IPAs were awful. Yeah, and, so did I. Yeah, I just still I, I haven't gotten illusion. used to gin. I think I've gin likers. It. Probably like that. We, yeah, we should give that to Randy Orton. Yeah, just test Randy out. Orton. I love this. So well, yeah, so he got a gin and I got gin fizz. I was just like, you know, fuck it, and I made this drink. Um, it was ginger ale, lemon, and fresh lemon. Yep. And just just Maker's Mark. It was fucking awesome, phenomenal. They made it perfectly. Yeah. So I make uh, Maker's and lime juice. Yeah. And then uh, if I'm feeling a little saucy, I'll do uh, Makers because I'm looking up. I got a. I mean, if you're out ordering a bourbon, get I, Makers. I got right? a bottle. Well, pay, that's overpay. That, that sounds like unless my you're at like bottle. a like a whiskey bar. I mean, if you're just at Archer's, you're not going to go like yeah. yeah. Give me the good stuff because they're going to charge you like a million dollars for it. Yeah. Well, that's like Century Bar for anything, and then they actually like use jiggers, so like you're not. But getting... Century Bar is an experience. It is, and now that they moved to their new location, they brought the bar with, but it's wider. It's not as like um, ominous, heavy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it felt heavy. It felt it, exclusive. Yeah, now it doesn't. And I was just, I'm just a guy. But that bar is in. fantastic. You know, like it's it's like it's, all yeah. the woodwork in you know Great in bar. GT Manor. It's like that woodwork on steroids. Like mm-hmm. that bar, they had yeah, to bring over great. pieces, but you know, mm-hmm. twenty five. There, there's a reason that bar is the second. Rated bourbon bar in the country. Mm. So there's a lot of high rated things in this town. For such a shit town. Um, you know. Well, I, it is it is what you make. This is this is what bothers me. Like everyone that like not everyone, but a lot of people I went to college with, they're like Eau Claire is a shit town. Like there's nothing to do here. Right, but the it fantastic like thing so is they stayed there. They stayed there. Yeah, they stayed there. Dayton, and, I and I'm so upset that they stayed there because, like, I'd love to stay there. There's just nothing for me to do there. Sure. Yeah, right. Yeah, I like Dayton. And everywhere I go around Dayton, Columbus, Cincinnati, they're all like, oh, Dayton. But, like, it's got so much. Second-rated whiskey bar. Third-rated steak. Uh, there was another one that I was that I was Dayton Dragons. About. Dayton Dragons are phenomenal. Yeah, that's an experience. That's, that's right up there. If you're going experiences. Yeah, I mean, as far as minor league teams go, that's got to be one of the best minor league stadiums and games I've been to. Yep. And I've been to a few. Uh, your friend would know uh, much better. Yeah, Juice. Than we would. Uh, Dayton's, Dayton's not a bad city. Uh, yeah, there's some parts to it, but and it's not the biggest city. Right. But it's a great. It's a good city. I think we're, we're, we're just at that point in both of our lives where, you know, we're um, so to straw focused on the kids. Yeah. Um, so you do a much better job than I do, like taking the kids out and immersing them in the culture where me, uh, I don't want to take my kids anywhere because I get embarrassed easily by it, which is ironic if people know me because yeah, I'll, is, I'll make a know. scene, but I don't want my kids to make a scene because like I was that person like, oh my God, why would you bring your snot nosed kid? Like, yeah, yeah. You see, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah. that person, but I'm a hundred percent. You know, it, it, that, that happens now, you know? I, yeah. I just feel bad. I feel guilty. It's not, I, not shame. It's guilt because like, I'm not doing, shouldn't, I, you shouldn't I am, feel that. I'm These upending someone are, else's experience. You know, no. The brewery's the last place because if when you're I, going out and trying to have an experience based on how everyone else around you is experiencing that experience, then you're having the wrong fucking experience. When, when I want to go, I want to have my experience, and I don't want to have to worry about my kids' experience. Yeah, so, but if you yeah. go and I'm there as a stranger with my kids in a different table off in the corner, and you're trying to touch it's ruining my kids? your experience. Hmm? 
Are you there? You're, you're there. Yeah. Having your own experience. And you're trying to and talk I'm my kids there, during my experience. I'm there with my kids somewhere else. Like, let's say we're at Crooked Handle. You're yep. at the bar. Yep. I'm at a table in the corner. Yep. With my kids. Yep. Is that ruining your experience? I feel bad for you. Like, if they're like... No if way. My kids are awesome. No, no, no. But at your, I'm saying that if they're at my age and, like, one starts crying because I have a two-year-old and she's going sure, through the happens. twos. It happens. But if I, they allow children... I feel bad for you. Then going in, you know that. No, kids cry. I, I enjoy my beer that much more, but I, I feel bad. It's a guilt thing. If my kids cry? No, I feel bad if my kids cry. Yeah, Not I'm if saying you're there people. by yourself or you're there with oh, some yeah, buddies. Yeah, I'm there by myself. And I'm with my kids, even a two-year-old, you yeah, know, and no, he's crying. I'm focused. You don't give a shit. And that's how everyone else is. The, the brewery or the place allows children. You did. It, that's just how it is. I was shitting on your point all over that. You did a great job. It made me pause and think for a little bit, but uh, I don't think I'd still rather. I get what you're saying. I totally get what you're saying. Yeah, but like, I want to hang out with my kids as as much as possible, and I want my kids to experience some of the things that I'm experiencing. Not the beer, obviously, because they're too young. But like, Crooked Handle has good food, right? They're not known for good food. They have good beer, Um, but. If I want to go have a good crooked handle beer and I can bring my kids, yeah, I'm fucking bringing them. Yeah, so they're still at like the um, like I would bring your. I mean, I would bring your sons, and uh, they're not legal to drive, but I would feel confident that they could drive home. Should I? Have a <laughs> I would not time. feel confident. I, I would. No way. My kids aren't. My daughters aren't at that stage yet. Especially, I would. I would take my oldest. I would take my five year old out because uh, she's pretty self sufficient. I wouldn't take the two year old out. Um, I could see that. It's just like when I want to go out, I don't. I'm because then I'm terrible too. I don't want to worry about them. No, I get, I get that, I get that. Because like you're, you're not, you're not worrying about (sighs) player three and player four when you're out. You know. Oh, I always am. I want to make sure they're having a good time. Right, but it's not constant maintenance. You weed the garden. You weed the garden once or twice during the meal. That's true. That's true. Not constant. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and. Honestly, at, at 13, yeah, I have some conversations with my son that I'm like, I enjoyed that conversation. Yeah. Crusty, that wasn't like crusty a, socks. That wasn't like a dad. Not yet. That yeah. wasn't like a dad son thing. That was just like two two, dudes. two guys just talking about sports or whatever. So it, that's kind of cool. And you my look, younger son's the same way because, as you know, he likes wrestling a lot. Yeah. Um, and he's like, oh, do you look forward awesome. to like? When they're in their twenties and you can just sit down. And I've thought about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, so you oh have, man, when they come over, when they're out of the house, like I'm gonna. I feel like I'm gonna be like the the dad that's like, oh, my sons are coming over. Like I'm gonna clean the house. I'm gonna get it all ready. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. And then like they'll come over and it, you know it'll just be like, oh hey dad, and I'll be like, you guys are here. Oh right. yes. Well, it's and they'll just be like, oh hey. Is it tougher like, for that's you? That's just how it is. It's is it tougher for you to picture knowing that you're probably going to move another four to five times? I will. Between... I will move no more times. I'm, yeah, I'm, I've know, I've got I'm, too I'm much probably... going on. I've got too much going on. I'm not moving again. Inside joke. JT's moved five yeah, times yeah. since I've years. moved a lot. Um, I'm sorry if I derailed that because I, oh I no no no. Like we had a great I think they're take. cool and I think they'll stay cool. I don't think that that will change. I enjoy having conversations with them. So I think. Uh, yep. I do, but I also don't want them to grow up so fast. Oh, yeah. And I could see you that, you know. Pause button. You don't want to be like the Adam Sandler movie, Click. Which right. Makes yeah, me like, cry. I, oh, yeah, that movie is very sad. So I, I, um, I don't watch it anymore. But, yeah, like, I could see where you want your kids to be your kids. And I could see where you're like, oh, man, these guys are cool. Yeah. They're going to be cool adults. Um, but, like, my sister's, bro- uh, not my sister, my wife's brothers yep. are... Awesome dudes, and they hang out with each other a lot, but they rarely hang out with their parents. Um, I could see that also happening, and that would be devastating for me. Yeah, yeah, but you guys are so like it'd be cool if they were like, "Hey, Dad, we, we went on this mountain hiking thing together," and I'd be like, "Fuck yeah, that's awesome!" But I'd be like, "Oh man, I wish I was there." Yeah, you know, with FOMO, you guys. FOMO, with yeah, your right, kids. yeah, yeah, FOMO. with my kids, yeah, FOMO, and I could see that, you know, if you're missing out, kids, yeah, yeah, yeah. FOMO, yeah. Um, the, uh, the, the one thing I will say in, uh, JT's defense, he won't have to worry about that because JT's kids are, uh, 
well adjusted doesn't begin to uh, describe them. They are fantastic. Like he he has uh, sons that are uh, 13 and 11 mm-hmm. that hang out with my five year old, and you would think that they're and obviously there's a generational gap there and everything mm-hmm. like that, but they're peas in a pod, and it's it's fantastic. So it's just a great reflection on what his and uh, um, his wife and him do. My wife mostly. Um, mostly his wife, like <laughs> ni- 90, 10. No, yeah, but he, he, I mean, he's involved. I'm involved. Um, but so I, I don't me. think I, I don't think you'll have to worry about that. I, 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 when I forecast this stuff, I look at my father-in-law, who I love spending time with. Yeah, I think he gets excited to hang out with us. Yeah, because like we go to the bar and like him and I will sneak off and oh, we go yeah. to the bar like an hour before. Yeah, and then all the girls come. Yeah, yeah. but it's nice. I could see you being that. Yeah, it's nice to just have that hour. It's probably not nice for him because I just talk his ear off the whole time. Yeah. And then, you know... Well, what if you don't like the And then we like fight the over guy. who gets the... What if I don't like the dad? I, I guess this so might just be a personal like thing. Me. Yeah, no, but, he's... And, you you know, maybe you haven't put much thought into it, but what if you don't like the you that your daughter marries? Oh, yeah, so you like... Like, you don't want to go to the bar with her husband. Or maybe he's, like, a really good guy, oh, that would but he's kind me. of a dork. Like, maybe he just is an introvert huge, or something. I'm, I'm yeah. a huge geek. Yeah, you're a geek. That's different. I do great with You're a geek, so. but you're not, like, an introvert at all. Yeah, no, but my... I would say my best friend's an introvert, which makes sense because I do all the talking. I never shut okay, up. Okay, that, just... that could work, yeah. What if he does all the talking? What if she marries, like, a really outgoing, like... What if he marries, like, a guy who's, like, very braggadocious? This is the best part. Then it's a cheap date because no one's drinking because we're just talking You're the whole just time. talking. That's great. All right. I like it. So you just have trying a lot to make of the positive optimistic spin. That's good. Well, I, yeah, I just hope uh, yeah, to be optimistic. I, oh, of course. You want... Yeah. Yeah, because whoever they, whoever they end up with, I just hope that we make an environment that is uh, as warm and inviting as the environment I'm in. Now, it's going to kill me if they don't like to play... My wife and I like to play games. Yeah. If they don't like to play games or something like that, or if like their interests completely like divert. Yeah, how could you not like to play games? Put your phone down. Play a game. Yeah. It's fun. Like everyone who's like, I don't want to play a game. Yeah. Eventually plays the game and it's like, or at least was, be a, this was worth it. In in that case, like be a great conversationalist or something yeah, like that. True, something yeah. like that. Like don't just like you said, just stare down like. Now there's a offer, difference. Like offer alternatives. If if you want to play Monopoly and they want to play Monopoly Junior, I get that you'd be like. Fuck yeah, that's this. Fine. This is dumb. Well, that's a bad example, but like, you know, kids' games are different than than like actual board games. But I get what you're saying. I and yeah, everyone who doesn't like playing games. My my daughter, uh, uh, Hannah, um, loves loves playing games. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, we just don't have the energy. You you've been there. Oh right? yeah, and, totally. But it's the en- that's really what it is. You need the energy. So and the and brain it's, capacity. It, it's not like it takes a lot. So she got a high ho Cheerio. Okay. For her birthday. So we were playing Hi-Ho Cheerio, yeah. counting game or whatever. Mm-hmm. She is undefeated. Of course. She, she is terrible at Candyland. Candyland's a complete luck game. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, well, she she will cry and just... Yeah. But with Hi-Ho Cheerio, it's a spinner game. So who mm-hmm. cares? It's complete luck. <laughs> we, we played five games. Yeah. My five-year-old won four times. Just mm-hmm. luck... My two-year-old won once. <laughs> nice. I, I am winless yeah. in Hi-Ho Cheerio. I will not let my kids beat me. They're well, gonna you have just get to up and do leave. it. They're gonna ha- no, no, not at all. Oh. I want my kids to beat me in every game, basketball, baseball, board games, everything. Thumb wrestling. But they're gonna earn it. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're gonna beat me for real. You're going Bill Lambert. The first style. time I You're lose, gonna body up. I, you know, when they're little, I, I did let them win. A, a, so you know, probably half the time. Yep. But I also also had to win so they knew. But now they're getting to the point like. Like I think my son is at the my older son. Yeah. He's at the point where he could hit better pitching than I could. Like he could see pitching better. So if we played like a hitting game, I don't know how that would work. Home run derby, for example. Simulated game. He would he would beat me. Like legitimately, he would beat me. But like every other sport, I'm still dominating. Right. But they're size matters. They're, eventually, they're gonna they're gonna beat me, and I'm gonna I'm gonna accept it. I'm gonna say, well, the torch is passed. Yeah. My kids beat me. And in board games, that's happening. It happens a lot, and it's frustrating more for them than me when they lose, because they don't like to lose. I'm like, oh, I lost at this game that earned me no additional income, right? No additional cre- credibility, so I'm fine with it. But they're not thinking like that. This is their life right now. The ten minutes we spent, or, you know, the, the hour we spent playing this game, that was all they had. You're right. So it's different for them. 
But sports, no. They're earning it. They're going to earn it. They got to beat me. Yeah. And they will. You protect the paint. Oh, they're going to beat yeah. me. If you they're going to the just, paint. One day they're going to come back and just fucking dominate. It's like the bad, And it's going to be embarrassing. Boys. But that's okay. I did play my older son and a bunch of his friends in Knockout. You ever play Knockout? Yeah. And I got just destroyed. Like Really? Just destroyed. Because like, when you have a lot of 13-year-olds, someone's making a basket. Yeah. You know? When you say Knockout, you're saying Lightning. I just agreed. Oh, right? is that... It's What's two, lightning? Two balls. From two the, balls. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. So we call yeah. that lightning. And you but shoot, yeah, yeah. and if you make yours before the first guy makes his, he's out. Yeah. That's knockout in in my neck of the woods. Yeah. Lightning. Um. Gym teacher, chime in. Is it knockout or lightning? What do you teach yeah. your teacher kids? Teaching? Uh, well, it's, we got they call it knockout here at the gym classes here, and we called it knockout in Illinois. Um. Because they play like um. Uh, I'm gonna screw up. We, I call it battle ball, but uh, dodgeball. But like where you both call sides have dodgeball balls. battle ball? Yeah, battle ball is awesome. How is that different? It's when you play in the entire gymnasium and not just like the wrestling room. Because we played oh, no, in the we played in the whole for, the whole basketball court. You're yeah. saying? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, we did that. Yeah. So we call it battle ball. Oh, we call it dodgeball. It's awesome. Yeah. The there was a period of time where there was no dodgeball. And then after they brought it back, yeah, kind of it was shit. with that soft shit. Yeah, that you can't even throw hard. So, but well, we had the we, real playground balls. So yeah, we could throw it both both the uh, the um, uh, Voight the Voight uh, rubberized balls, the vulcanized yeah, rubber yeah. Um, that make your hand smell. Um, Jim yeah, te- right. Jim, yeah, gym teachers chime in. He won't he won't put on um, YouTube, but I'll share. Um, the best part is so we worked at a summer camp real quick, mm-hmm. and we did it in a wrestling room, much smaller. Nowhere to fucking hide. Oh, I no. Mean, yeah, you're not Everything's hiding. padded or whatever. Yep. And uh, we did it as a staff event. So, like, oh. everyone in there is an, an adult. No oh, yeah, crying. that's good. That's good. And a lot of the female staff, just to let you know the quality of athlete, just got off the um, uh, national championship. They just won the national championship for softball. For softball. So, so girls that can ass. just... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just fucking... And they were, they were awesome. doing the whole... And uh, it, it it was brutal. Like there's still like you know the old fashioned school clocks. Like yeah. on the, that went flying off oh, the wall. Like awesome. it got glass shattered, and everyone's just sweep it off to the side. Don't fucking step there. Let's go. Yeah. And uh, uh, spoiler alert: Chuggle Orion is you know three fifteen offensive mm-hmm. lineman, and just he's got you know calves that would rival Will Sasso. So he's just yeah, a yeah. stuff. Big guy. People are getting destroyed. But it's the best. No one's no one's fucking. So what does it, his calves have to do with the destruction? I'm, I'm just he's it, destroying it, them. It's a you're a you got a good base. The power transfer from Being, your legs. having a good base can hurt you because he can he has more more. Oh yeah, no, he was getting destroyed. Get yeah. It wasn't like he was fucking dominating. You know, awesome. Not, yeah. It's just so awesome. It's a leveler. But in a in a smaller wrestling style room, everything's padded yeah. because you can dive. You know, basketball court you can run. Wrestling room, you can. I'll put this out there because I know that this is the case for a few people I've talked to recently. There's a big vote in Beaver Creek today, and if you're thinking about moving away from Beaver Creek, people have. uh, Might I suggest Oakwood only because we, they, the sixth graders every year at Harmon Elementary have a big dodgeball tournament. It is fucking awesome. I went when my oldest son was in it, and my youngest son will be in there next year. It is such a sight to see. The whole school participates, uh, and it is phenomenal. They have, like, the teachers actually referee this thing. So, you know, there's no, like, cheap cheap outs or cheap stay-ins. You know, kids will get hit and be like, I didn't get hit, and they'll stay in. Yeah. None of that shit. They get whistled. This get is, the like, fuck legit out of it. Get out of there, ball. Timmy. Uh, yeah. Move to Oakwood. It's a great town. That's all I have to say. Um, and, the, and we pass pretty much, I would say, 99.9% of the levies. Ever have been passed since I've been there, it's been a hundred percent. Every single one's passed. Uh, and so if that's your concern, in there in, you go. In uh, so our kids versus teachers in fifth grade, we did a kickball game. Kids versus that, teachers. That, well, that's better for kids versus teachers because it awesome. can get out of control. Some teacher just teachers just killed, gets it like teachers killed us as they maniacal should. and just it just was, pelts kids. You it, can't do that. It was 1994, yeah. and fifth graders have no reason, you know, because. It's two classes of fifth graders, and you're out there in the field. You're not communicating. And my fifth grade teacher, my favorite teacher of all time, Mr. Van Houten, could kick it up onto the third floor of our building. So, like, it was fantastic. Wow. Now, now when I walk through, because it was it's a block from fifth. my, it was a block from my house. 
I could kick a ball up there, but in fifth grade, that like that yeah, was, it was, that like, was a massive. Yeah, it was like kicking it on top of the Sears was, Tower. Like, yeah. like my girls love just. I'll, I'll go in the backyard. I just kick it. You know, that's that, cool. that, that was the one thing I I'm play kickball with my kids. I should do that. that but. We should have a big kickball tournament. Yeah. But wow, we got all over the place. It wasn't it wasn't a beer heavy, but it was a terrible beer. So I'm recovering. I'm probably not going to have a, a a beer for a while. I think we knew when we had terrible beers that this was going to be kind of a sidetracked episode. Yeah. What are we going to talk about? Terrible beer. Terrible beer. It was terrible. So again, we will have beers that suck. Just let us know what you want us to drink. Just throw in those suggestions. We listen to input. We know you're watching, Chuglos. Yeah, you're watching. We see. I mean, we, we got. We see, we see the ratings. We see it's, the numbers. Our ratings are are going through the roof right now. It's like dog coin, to the moon. To the moon. Our the, ratings are to the moon. Diamond hands. Diamond. That's it. Diamond hands. That's it. Episode one thirty eight. Uh, join us next week. I think it's my week for beer. I'll bring it. Psh. Shit. That's the episode. Psh. Shit. <laughs>